everybody. Miss Kanisha is once again out here in our Urban Harvest Teaching Garden to show us a little bit about growing brassicas. So as the weather starts to cool down, I know it's a beautiful, beautiful day, the sun is shining, but the temperatures are getting cooler outside. So that means it's time for us to be planting our cool weather crops. And some of those cool weather crops belong to the brassica family of plants. It is a large family of plants that encompasses very, very many edible and non-edible plants. But we want to talk about the ones that we can eat, right? Our edible ones. So this family of plants are green vegetables. There are a lot of our leafy green vegetables. They enjoy cooler temperatures and they all kind of require the same growing conditions. So some of the brassicas in this fam, some of the plants in this brassica family are our cabbages. This is an ornamental variety. Here we go. Uh, as well as this guy here. This is a little baby cabbage. All right. As well as collards. Okay. Kale. We've got two different varieties right here. So this is our dino and this is our curly leafed kale and our mustard greens. There are some beautiful, beautiful mustard greens. Radishes are also a part of this family. There are some plants that just love this cool weather. They like to grow in temperatures a little less than 85 degrees. You don't want it to be too hot. Uh, and over 20 degrees, okay? So they tend, to, they can survive when temperatures get cooler when it gets less than 20, but not for prolonged periods of time. So there are measures that we can take that we'll talk about later to protect our plants if, if and when temperatures drop below 20, which we know is not very often here in Houston. So if we want to grow brassicas in our garden as the weather starts to cool down, the best thing that we can do the, to give them the best opportunity and the best chance for surviving and thriving is to start them off as transplants, as I've shown you, right? So a transplant is a baby plant that has already been started. It's got its roots are established so that when you plant this in the garden, right, it's much easier for those roots to, to thrive, all right, and take hold. So we want to generally, if possible, plant our brassicas by transplant. Okay, except for the, of course, radishes are good by seeds. If you do want to start your own, all right, the best time to be doing that is in September so that they have plenty of time to get started. You want your transplants to be several inches tall. Uh, so we, we are going to be showing you guys how to plant. I am going to be showing you guys how to plant from transplants rather than seeds. Now we are ready to plant. I have started with a transplant that I find that looks healthy. You're always going to want to start with the healthiest transplant. Um, that is going to be a plant that's about four to six inches tall, all right, and has at least four to six leaves, okay, true leaves. So this one has about six, so I'd say that this one is a good size, and it looks very healthy. It doesn't have any signs of pest damage or disease, so this is perfect. So when I'm ready, once I've picked out my plants, I'm going to want to prepare my garden bed for planting, okay? And so the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to dig a hole. So when we're digging the hole, the best way for us to know if our hole is big enough is by taking our container and placing it in the hole, all right? And so that guy, I think, fits in there perfectly before he takes up residence though, we need to make sure that he's going to be healthy and he's gonna be happy in his new home. So what I wanna do is I'm going to mix in about a scoop full of this organic slow release fertilizer. This is the best one that I can find, but if you have organic fertilizer, you're just gonna to wanna to treat it. I'm gonna put a little bit in the hole. I'm gonna mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it into the soil so it is available to those roots as they're growing. Beautiful. All right. Now, 
before I put my plant in the, its new home, I'm gonna have to get it out of its container, right? So I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna set him to the side. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to take my two pincher fingers, I'm gonna pinch very gently the stem, like that, okay? And then I'm gonna flip him over, over, squeeze it very, very gently. Lift it up, right? Now this guy's roots are already a little bit wrapped up, so I'm gonna to wanna to tickle, 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 tickle. If a little bit of soil comes loose, that's fine, because it's going back into the garden bed, okay? And I'm gonna put him in there, very, very gently. And cover it lightly with soil, okay? Cover it very lightly with soil. Alright, I'm gonna pat him, pat him in there, very gently, very gently. I'm gonna make sure I label him so I know exactly what's planting. That's my dino kale. And then once I've got him planted, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I mulch him. Alright? Alfalfa hay is really good for this. I'm gonna take some hay. And I like to say I'm going to make a little bird's nest around him, something very similar to a bird's nest around him, all right? And this is going to help not only deter weed growth, we don't want those weeds popping in there, right? We don't want any weeds. So we are going to put a little bird's nest around him. It's going to be like a little blanket, all right? So if it gets too cold outside, what that'll do is that'll protect him from the cool. We talked about how they don't really like long long periods of cool weather and also when it's hot 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 right so the sun does something to our garden right called evaporation it steals our water off our plants right and it is absolutely wonderful but we don't want our plants to go thirsty okay so what this also does is it makes a little bit of a blanket helps shade our soil so that all of our water doesn't disappear up into the to the sky right so once he's planted he's padded he's got his blanket on the last thing that i'm going to want to do is i'm going to want to water right i'm going to want to water him pretty deeply the first time all right give him a good good drink and there we go we've planted a dino kale right here in the garden So now that we have successfully planted our brassica, our little bitty baby kale, we need to now know how to take proper care of the plants, okay? So it is not too strenuous, it's pretty simple uh, how to care for them. So as we finished planting, we added mulch, right? So it is important for us to keep our plants mulched, all right? So co to continuously keep a thick layer of that mulch on so our plants don't dry out. Because for the brassica families, all right, a lot of our roots are in the top, top layers of the soil, all right? So they don't, we have some deep, 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 deep down, but the majority of our roots are on the top. So we don't want all that water that's on the surface to immediately evaporate. We want it to hang around, okay? So our plants are well watered and they don't dry out. So that's the first thing that we're gonna wanna do, all right? <clears throat> and to keep a consistent watering schedule. So as the water, as the temperatures start to cool down a little bit, we're not gonna need to water as much, but as long as we're checking, all right, the, the, the soil to make sure it's not too dry by moving some of that mulch aside and just simply, we could do the finger test, right? So we're gonna stick our finger just in the soil. And if the soil sticks to your finger, all right, and it's somewhat moist, then you know it has enough water at the moment. If you stick your finger in there and you notice that it's not, right, you can't really rub it together, it is too dry, then you want to give it a little bit of a kick. All right. The next thing that we need to know is to make sure to keep out our eyes out for pests. All right. And so when I say pests, I mean little bitty cabbage worms. They're tiny little green and they're super cute, but they do they do, do damage. All right. So cabbage worms is an issue, aphids is a major issue um, that we might find, and the best thing that we can do, all right, is to invite other insects into our garden, our predatory insects, and they will take care of the problem for us, okay? So ladybugs, if we've got ladybugs in our garden, then we shouldn't have too much of a problem with the aphids. If we have a wasp population, 
um, they can help also take care of our cabbage worms, all right? But if we see plants that have holes in them that are damaged, I see quite a few that are over here, uh, then that might be a sign if you have holes in it that it does have, it might have pests around it. So you can kind of search for eggs. Another issue might be disease, okay? Or if our plants get stressed, they have a harder time surviving. One way to look out for signs of stress is if our leaves are turning yellow or purple, then it might be that they need more nutrients, that they're sick, right? And when we're sick, we are gonna help take care of them, all right? So that just might mean that they need a little bit of a boost of nutrients, and then we're just going to give them a little extra fertilizer, all right? So that is how we are going to t protect our plants. Do, when it, If the weather's drop and it gets too cool, then it might be time to protect our plants with a light covering, all right? So that might be a sheet. It might be a light colored tarp that we could just cover them. Not for a long period of time, just for the nights when we know it's gonna be cool. So that has how we can protect them from the heat, from the cold, as well as pests and disease, all right? So we that is how we take care of our plants, okay? As they start to grow, which a lot of these are going to take about two and a half months, three months to mature, all right, for them to be able to produce food that we can then harvest and eat. So it does take a lot of patience, right? So we need to be patient when it comes to our brassicas. Now our radishes are a little bit different than our leafy green vegetables, um, such as broccoli, cauliflower, collard greens. They, they mature a little bit differently. So that number is more for our big, big leafy green vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, collards, okay, as well as our cabbage. Now, our mustard greens is that we discussed, they can be eaten when they're pretty small. So we don't have to wait for them to grow into huge, big leaves, okay? They can be eaten when they're smaller. Our radishes, that's about 30 days for them to grow, so that's about one month and you've got these beautiful radishes to eat. Radishes, you wanna continuously plant them, so as you pick them, you, you keep planting them, all right? And then you can have radishes all season, and we love radishes, right? So once they've reached maturity, when we've waited, 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 and we wanna get in and eat some of our yummy, crunchy vegetables, there's so many different ways that we can prepare them, there's so many different ways that we can eat them. Uh, I know some of the ways we have tried, we can eat cabbage, we can make, you can put our, your cabbages in soups, you can put them in wraps, you can make a slaw, a salad. A lot of these vegetables are really good in salads. Kale, collard greens, mustard greens. Uh, you know, kale is delicious in smoothies. That's how Miss, Miss Kanisha really, really enjoys eating it, is in my smoothies. And radishes, just to slice them up with some lemon, some salt, some pepper, is delicious, all right? So if you guys take real good care of your brassicas, then they will produce lots of yummy, yummy vegetables for you guys to get a hold of and to eat.